Go, 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 go! My father shouted at us. We grabbed our belongings and ran to the black car that was parked in the driveway. I grabbed my younger brother's hand and pulled him to keep up. We dove into the car, immediately followed by our parents. Keep your heads down. My father yelled as he started the engine. I peeked out the back window at the men dressed in black suits who hopped into another vehicle and pursued us. Hi there, my name is Samantha. Before I tell you what happened to me and my family last summer, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell too. If you do, you will have the best summer ever, unlike mine. Growing up, my father was hardly ever around because of his job. I would be lying if I said I knew exactly what he did, but I didn't. The only thing I knew was that he worked for the government. Every time I asked my mother what my father did, she would always say the same thing. Go ask your father. As tempted as I was to ask my father what he did, I was afraid of the answer that I might have been given. I mean, what if he was on the bad side of the government that exploited people? Would I be able to look at my father the same? One year, my mother eventually got tired and told my father that she wanted a divorce. It was a year I would never forget. Not because of their divorce, but something else that my father was mixed up with. And by default, we all got involved. I can't wait to put on the dress I bought for Drew's party. I said excitedly as my mother opened the door. My brother, mother, and I spent the entire afternoon at the mall. I couldn't wait to shower and lay in front of the television. But when we got inside, I was no longer tired, but fearful. Our home had been trashed. We walked through the house slowly, assessing the damage. My mother called the police and I called my father hysterically. My dad got there just as the police were wrapping up. He spoke to the officers and then to my mother. Have you checked the security footage yet? My father asked. My mother shook her head. My father walked to the study where he could access the security footage from the computer. Isaac and I followed while my mother finished up with the police. As he went through the footage, he realized that the person who trashed the place knew exactly where all the cameras were in the house and was very careful to avoid them. When my mother came into the study, my father turned to us. Whoever did this knew the cameras were in the house, he said sternly. We gasped <gasps> simultaneously. Knowing that someone we knew did this was terrifying. My father got on the phone and made a few calls as he checked all the doors and windows of the house. There was no forced entry or broken windows, which strengthened his point that it was definitely someone that we knew. I think that whoever did this just wanted to scare us. I called Scotty and the boys and they agreed to do 24 hour surveillance on the house. When they get here, I'll head out to get more cameras and new locks for all the doors and reinforce the windows. My mother pulled father to the side and spoke with him. After speaking, she hugged him and began to cry. I pulled Isaac out of the room so that they could get some privacy. Let's start cleaning up, I said unenthusiastically. My dad stayed at the house and nothing happened for the first few days. Then one night, while I was asleep, someone placed their hand over my mouth. My eyes shot open as I screamed and tried to fight the person off. Sammy, it's me, my father whispered. He then placed a finger on his lip for me to be still. He pointed towards my closet and I nodded and moved swiftly towards it. When my dad built the house, each room had a hidden space behind the closet in case of emergencies. We both got into the small space and waited. I heard someone come into the room and I buried my face in my father's chest so I wouldn't cry out. We stayed in the closet for about five minutes, but it seemed as though time stood still. Wait here. No matter what happens, do not come out unless I come back for you. He whispered. I grabbed my father's hand as he tried to leave the closet. He kissed my forehead and nodded at me. I closed back the secret door and waited. After a few grueling minutes, my dad came back. We have to leave here now. Grab a few things and meet me in the living room in two minutes. My father said sternly. Are mom and Isaac okay? I asked, my voice cracking with fear. My father nodded before he exited the room. As I was zipping up my duffel bag, I heard a window break somewhere in the house. Go, 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 go! My father shouted at us. We grabbed our belongings and ran to the black car that was parked in the driveway. I grabbed my younger brother's hand and pulled him to keep up. We dove into the car, immediately followed by our parents. Keep your heads down! My father yelled as he started the engine. I peeked out the back window at the men dressed in black suits who hopped into another vehicle and pursued us. Dad, what's going on? I screamed as we sped away. I'm sorry I got you all mixed up in this. There's a bounty on our family for one billion dollars. 
The last job I did, I guess we upset a few people. My brother, mother, and I all began speaking at the same time as we tried to question my father. Listen. My father said seriously. I need you guys to focus if we're going to get through this. Each person in our organization was given a safe house that nobody else knows about. We will hide out there until I figure out what our next move will be. We can't use anything electronic or we can be traced. Toss everything out the window now. We tossed everything as my dad continued driving. My father was able to lose the car behind us. We ditched the car and hiked the rest of the way to the safe house. The safe house was in a heavily forested area. I watched as my father opened a lid in the ground and told us to go inside. The safe house was equipped with an AC, lights, water, and of course, surveillance cameras. While the rest of us got ready for bed, my father took watch at the computers. When I got up, I saw my dad monitoring the cameras that were stationed around the grounds. I asked him if he needed anything, and he said no. Isaac turned on the television, and to our horror, our faces were plastered on every news channel, calling for our heads and the bounty of one million to be paid. I looked over at my mother, and she appeared to have aged over the past few days. Whoever wanted us eliminated had the money to do it. My father, of course, couldn't give us any details about his last mission. I couldn't help but think that at some point we would be found and I just needed to accept my destiny. The tension in the safe house for the first two days was horrible. We ate, slept, and took turns watching the computer. By the third day, things felt a little lighter and we began to smile and laugh again. Sadly, that was short-lived. Dad? I said as I was watching the monitors one evening, I think someone is out there. My dad rushed to the monitors and looked at it tensely. I was right. Five shadows appeared on the screen. You know the drill! My father shouted. We grabbed our bags that we had been living out of and waited for further instruction. We're trapped! How are we gonna get out? My mother screamed hysterically. My father smiled smugly and pressed a button. It was followed by a loud explosion. We watched on the camera as bodies were tossed into the air every time he pressed the button. My dad ran quickly and removed the large shelf that was against the wall, revealing a trap door. This leads all the way to the beach. It's a straight, rocky path. My dad said as he handed us flashlights. We gotta move. The last thing he picked up was a handheld surveillance tablet. We hurried as quickly as we could through the corridor. The air was stuffy, and I felt as though I was about to pass out because it was hard to breathe. Okay, guys, we have some followers, so brace yourselves. My father said, then pressed the button on the tablet that he held. The corridor shook and rocks began to rain down on us. My mother, brother, and I screamed as we dodged the rocks that were caving in on us. The air got cooler the further we ran, and I could smell the fresh air. But after one last rumble, the roof caved in around us. I'm not sure how long I was out for, but I woke up to no sign of my family. Mom? Dad? Isaac? I screamed as my eyes tried to adjust to the dark. Groans and rocks moving indicated that my family was okay. Is everyone okay? My dad asked worriedly. Everyone replied in confirmation. My foot is stuck and I can't move! I called out. In the shadows of the rumble, I saw my family move the rocks from on top of my leg. My dad scooped me up into his arms and said, We have to keep moving. We are not out of the woods just yet. The air was getting thick and it was getting hard to breathe again. When we got to the end, it was blocked. I heard Isaac groan and I couldn't help but feel helpless and frustrated. We're almost there. My father said as he put me down gently. He walked up to Isaac and said, You can do this, son. Before he gave him a bear hug. I watched as my family cleared the passage as quickly as their tired limbs could. Once a big enough space was opened, my father instructed my brother to climb out first. Once he was out safely, my parents helped me to go through the hole. As soon as I got out, I felt my lungs expand as I gasped for the clean, cool air. My brother helped my mother out, and then it was my father's turn. When my father was about to climb out, we heard angry voices arguing, followed by a few short, loud explosions and rumbling. My mother, brother, and I moved away from the entrance of the cave as rocks came down and blocked the entrance again. Daddy, no! I cried as I stumbled forward. We sat huddled together on the shore as we cried at the loss of my dad. We didn't know what our next move would be, and we had no idea who was after us. A few minutes later, we heard a helicopter. We moved away as it landed on the shore. 
Scotty, one of my father's friends, hopped out the helicopter. I didn't know if we would have made it in time. He said to my mother. Where is Roger? We lost him. My mother said as tears rolled down her cheeks. Roger has been in close communication with me, and we all made a pact that if anything happened to any of us, the others would ensure that our families are taken care of. Scotty said and waved us toward the helicopter. We're sitting ducks here. We need to move now. Once we were all strapped in safely, we took off. As we were taken off, I looked on the shore and saw someone waving frantically. It was my dad. He was alive. He was trying to get our attention. He put his hands together to form an X symbol, and that's when I realized what he meant. Scotty couldn't be trusted. I tapped my mother on the leg and pointed. When she looked at me, I nodded towards the window. Scotty was busy talking to the pilot in the front seat, so he didn't see my father or my mother and I looking out the window. Before I could do anything, my mother jumped into action. She locked Scotty's neck with her arm, and Isaac did the same with the pilot. Isaac said to the pilot, This is our stop. Take us back. I felt sick to my stomach, but the pilot, to my surprise, did as he was told. My family didn't even wait for the helicopter to land completely before we were hopping out of the helicopter and running towards my father. My father looked at Scott menacingly. Scott signaled to the pilot to take them into the air. As they were taking off, my father said to my mother, Take the kids and hide. But what if... My mother said. My father interrupted her and said, I will come and find you. As we moved as quickly as we could from the area and tried to find a safe place to hide, more explosions filled the atmosphere. Isaac turned around to the sound, and my mother said, Your dad can take care of himself. A few minutes later, as promised, my father found us hiding in an old overturned boat that was stuck in some shrubs by the shore. Dad! Dad! Isaac and I said happily. My dad scooped me up once again, and Isaac and my mom followed him. Around the corner of the cove, there was a pier with a yacht. My father and Isaac and mom all got in without saying a word. We didn't even question my father about where the boat came from. As we sat in the cabin, while well, he started the engine, at this point, we were all just happy to be alive, and in one piece. Well, barely. I don't know where we are, or where we are going. What I can tell you, is that we are somewhere in the middle of the ocean, looking and watching to see who will strike next.